The camera, it's our instrument to visually bring an audience to a world they otherwise may never see. To capture moments in time, to bring a story to life. But the camera is only a piece of the puzzle to bring that story to the screen. Most filmmakers would agree that poor audio quality is more distracting than poor video quality. Now, this is part four of Before You Upgrade Your Camera, which is a video series I've been making focusing on things to consider investing in or upgrading before you upgrade your camera. Now, in the first episode, I talked about light stands. In the next episode, I talked about lights and how you kind of paint a scene with lights. And then in the follow-up episode, I talked about light modifiers, kind of thinking that as your paintbrush and adding texture and, and dimension and tonality to your scene by modifying those lights. Now, we're gonna pivot away from the image just a little bit. And like I said, that, that image that your camera is really a sensor in a box capturing all of what you're pointing your camera at. So all that that light and, and, and texture and everything you're adding, your camera is your camera sensor is capturing that. But capturing that image, you're only halfway there. For making videos, whether whether it's a documentary or or, or narrative film or commercial or whatever the case may be, audio is just as important and in many cases many would argue more important than your video quality and that's what i wanted to talk about in this video i wanted to talk about a few different types of mics to consider upgrading or investing in before upgrading your camera because that audio quality is really going to make a difference in the overall production value of your projects. And later on in the video, I've got a real special guest to kind of give his input on sound and also talk about another piece of equipment that's really important and critical to have when capturing good quality audio. But before we do that, I wanted to talk about microphones. I'm going to specifically talk about two types of microphones, the shotgun mic and the lavalier microphone. And the reason being is because those two types of microphones are typically what you're going to see most commonly used on a film set, on a production, or an interview, or whatever the case may be. Now, there are a ton of different other microphones out there that we, you could talk about, but we're not going to focus on those because this is really just a primer just to kind of give you an idea of different types of microphones out there. Now, most of the microphones that I mentioned in this video are made by Rode. That's because that is the direction that I decided to take when investing in microphone equipment. Having said that, I did reach out to Rode and ask that they would supply me with a couple more microphones to talk about in in this video. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to focus on two different types of microphones, the shotgun and lavalier microphone. And I'm going to start off with the shotgun microphone. And the reason why I'm starting off with the shotgun microphone is, is simply because it's the most versatile of the two. And if I were to recommend a first microphone to, to purchase for your kit, would it would be a shotgun microphone because of its versatility. Now this here is the Rode Video Micro. It's got a dead cat on top of it, but if I rip it off, you can see this. the microphone is actually pretty small and it's designed to go on top of like the, a camera, like a cold shoe mount or something like that, and just to plug into the three and a half millimeter input, mic input that you have on your camera. Now they're around 50 or 60 bucks, uh, depending on where you get it, uh, but do have good quality audio, much better than your onboard microphone that you have on your camera. Now moving right along to something a little bit in a higher price point is this guy right here. This is a Rode VideoMic NTG. Rode was kind enough to send this out to me to talk about. And, and with the higher price, you you get some, some more features and, and overall better audio quality. So you get better off axis rejection than this microphone we just talked about. And what that helps is, is just really isolate the audio that's coming in front of the microphone. You also have uh, this gain control right here on the back to, to really fine tune the, the gain output of this microphone. So if you have a, a camera with a really weak preamps and all that, you can kind of crank this up to kind of help bypass those, those preamps. Um, it has a built-in battery, unlike the mic that we just talked about, but you can charge it through USB Type-C and the battery life is really good on this microphone. One thing I really do like about this microphone is that when you plug it into the camera and you turn your camera on, the microphone turns on. And when you turn the camera off, it actually powers 
$1,000 down the microphone. So you don't have to worry about turning the microphone on and off and worrying about your battery draining and all that kind of good stuff. With this mic, you also have a 75 and 150 Hertz uh, high pass filter, which really helps eliminate that, that low rumble that you get maybe with, you know, wind noise or something like that. So it really helps kind of eliminate that low end rumble. Like I said, you also get a negative 20 uh, decibel pad on here and some other features that, that really make this stand out from the microphone that we previously talked about. But if you want the absolute best audio quality from a shotgun microphone, then I highly recommend you getting something like the Rode NTG5, which is what I'm using right now. Now the benefit of a microphone, shotgun microphone, like the NTG5 and other shotgun microphones is the fact that it has XLR inputs. And, and the reason why that these XLR uh, inputs are really good is because you can use XLR cables, which are balanced cables. So you can run a really long XLR cable and run it from your camera or your sound recorder or whatever the case may be without any interference or loss of audio quality. Now more on the XLR cables, a lot of these microphones do require 48 volt phantom power, meaning it's basically power that comes from your audio device or your camera if you have full size XLR inputs on your camera to power the microphone. But there are microphones out there that have a little compartment to put a AA battery in there to, to power the, the, the microphone without having to use phantom power. So if you were running it into a DSLR or something like that, you'd be able to do that. However, the NTG5 that I have requires phantom power from a, a field recorder recorder or a camera or something like that. Okay, that's gonna wrap it up for shotgun microphones. Again, if you're building up your kit and you're getting your first microphone, I would certainly recommend getting a shotgun microphone first for its versatility. But now we're gonna kinda pivot towards a wireless lavalier microphone and kinda talk about those a little bit. Now the first microphone system I'm gonna talk about in this category is the Rode Wireless Go. Now Rode was not nice enough to send this out to me, so thanks Rode for, for sending this to me to talk about. And the really cool thing about this system is, well, you can use it just like this. You have a, a transmitter and a receiver and the receiver can go right into the cold shoe mount and it has a little eighth inch plug to plug right into your camera and then this right here actually has a microphone built into it so you can actually just clip it onto your talent shirt or whatever the case may be and you're able to capture audio right off that but you can also plug in a, a lavalier microphone to clip it on to kind of hide it make it a little bit better or have a little higher quality lavalier microphone to put in there to get a little bit better quality audio now these units have a built-in battery that you could charge via usb type c and the benefit there is it just keeps the footprint much smaller however the downside there is you can't swap out the battery so when the battery dies your whole unit dies. And that kind of segues me into the next type of, of wireless lav unit is this guy right here, which is the Rode Link Wireless Filmmaker Kit. Now, as you can see, these units are much different in size. However, the benefit here with this unit is you can change the batteries out. So if the, if the batteries die, you just swap them out and then you keep on shooting. And the last little system I'm gonna talk about here is the Tascam DR10L. This is a great little unit. It's a kind of a self-contained unit. It looks like a wireless system, but it's actually not a wireless system because it actually has a built-in recorder on it. So you can record to micro SD cards and you can actually record two different channels. You can record a, a regular channel and a backup channel, which is really awesome. Now I do want to mention it does have a headphone jack. So as you're getting audio set up and all that kind of stuff, you can, you know, test the audio, make sure it just sounds good before you start rolling. But once you're rolling, you're not going to be able to monitor the audio. Now, just like with the Rode Lavalier Wireless Filmmaker Kit, it does come with its own lavalier microphone, which is really great. So I have to do is slap in a battery in this case put a memory card in it and you are ready to roll well that kind of wraps up what i'm going to talk about with regards to microphones but as important as microphones are they're only just a piece of the puzzle now i thought it'd be really cool to get the perspective of an industry professional and someone whose opinion that i and many others respect here on youtube about audio so i reached out to curtis judd to ask if he'd kind of give his perspective on audio and, and also compound a little bit more on on recording and capturing that audio and what's needed to do that. So with that being said, I'm gonna send it on over to Curtis and get his insight on the topic. Thanks for letting me come on to talk about sound, Tyler. So first of all, I wanna talk about something that's really fundamental and that is, is that sound is actually really more important than most of us assume or we seem to take it for granted in a lot of cases. And let me give you a couple of examples. Number one, if you want to submit a film to a film festival, a lot of film festivals get a ton of entries and one of the things that the judges often have to do just to get through all of the entries is they will watch just the first few seconds of your film. If your sound is bad, that's a very easy way for them to say, that one's out. And I think really what it comes down to is reaching your audience. If you want to reach your audience, they have to be able to understand what's going on 
And a lot of that understanding comes via sound. If they're straining to hear what people are saying or what your actors or talent are saying, you lose them very quickly. So that's kind of like the, the basic threshold. You have to meet that. As a bonus, if you can provide something that sounds really enjoyable to listen to, all the better. Then you're really making some impactful film. Now, the number one way to do this is microphone placement. You have got to get that microphone close. So if we're talking about a boom microphone, it really needs to be within about 18 inches or 45 centimeters of your talent to really get the best quality sound. Now, I would also say here that a boom microphone is probably should be your first choice. It is the one that will typically sound more natural. If you've got a microphone on your camera, that's just gonna be scratch audio. So that's good enough for reference audio so that you can sync your good quality audio back to the camera, but don't plan on, for a dialogue driven piece at least, don't plan on just using a camera top shotgun microphone. Now, another thing to consider is lavalier microphones. Lavalier microphones are really important as well. I would never look at them as the primary microphone, except in a few extenuating circumstances. So for me, I always put a wireless lavalier microphone on the talent, but I also boom. And the boom is gonna be my preference if the sound comes out well. If it doesn't, I can always turn to the lavalier and use that as a backup. Now, obviously there are extenuating circumstances. I would not use the excuse of, well, we didn't have a sound person. <laughs> I really think you need to have a sound person. If you're doing a no-budget film, find one of your friends who wants to get involved in making a film and have them focus on sound. And you can make things sound so much better that way. Now, once you have a dedicated person on sound, I think it's really important that you fix sound problems on the set. Don't just try to buy new gear that you think will do better at not picking up the heater or the air conditioner in the room or the refrigerator that's plugged in over here or whatever it is, fix those problems on set. If you have to use a generator for the lights, find a way to put the generator somewhere. This sound person can find a place for that generator that is not going to wreak havoc on the sound, or they will have sound blankets and they can put the sound blankets around the generator. So at least it cuts down on that sound. Whatever it needs to be done, find a way to do it to make your sound better. If you leave it to fix it in post, you're gambling big time. Now, once you have your dedicated sound person and you have a dedicated recorder, which is separate from your camera, you can do a number of things that you can't do by just running a mic to your camera. Now, running a mic to your camera can be a perfectly legitimate thing to do. If you're just doing a sit down interview and you've got a cinema camera that has pretty good microphone inputs, yeah, definitely use that, that's totally fine. But there's some disadvantages to that as well that can be solved by having a separate recorder. And let me kind of run through some of those. One of the most obvious ones is that Recorders typically have more than just two microphone inputs. Most cameras either have one or two microphone inputs. And so once you get yourself into a situation where you need more than two inputs, you're probably gonna need a dedicated recorder. Another thing that's really important to keep in mind is that whether you have a dedicated sound person or not, touching the camera to make adjustments to sound while you're shooting is not ideal. There's no camera operator in the world who would you know, invite a dedicated sound person to stand right next to them at their camera and adjust the sound throughout the shoot. It's just really, it's too, it's kind of risky. So if you've got two people trying to control the camera at the same time, that's a problem. If you've got a sound person who, you know, has to adjust their control on the camera to adjust the sound and it wiggles the camera a little bit, it can ruin the shot. There are just so many things that make that not a good idea. Another thing that dedicated audio recorders have, the quality ones in particular, are limiters. And what a limiter does is that if your talent suddenly gets louder than you expected, then with digital recordings, you will typically get clipping or distortion. A limiter will actually save you in those cases, at least a high quality limiter, like an analog limiter in something like a sound device's mix pre or higher. Now, what a limiter does is it basically, as the audio gets loud, once it gets to a certain threshold, it will pull it down just a little bit so that it doesn't distort. Another technology that some of the audio recorders are starting to have now is a wide dynamic range recording capability with 32-bit float recording. This does a similar thing to the limiters, except it does it in a different way. And it allows you in post to be able to bring those levels down where somebody got really, really loud unexpectedly. And in a 32-bit float recording, it will not be clipped and distorted. Another thing that a dedicated audio recorder has typically is balanced XLR inputs. So if you need to run longer cables to get that microphone closer to your talent, that's what a balanced cable is really good for is it allows you to run a longer cable with less risk of picking up interference or buzz or hum or things of that nature. Now, if you're on a tight budget, 
where can you start as far as dedicated audio recorders are concerned? One of my recommendations is the Tascam DR60D Mark II. It's not a perfect recorder, but it's $200, two high quality XLR inputs, clean gain, records to an SD card, keeps the two different microphones separate from each other. So in post, you can mix them very carefully. Once you're ready to go up to the next level and spend a little bit more money to get some really good quality, Zoom F6 and the Sound Devices Mix Pre are my next recommendation. I in particular like the Sound Devices Mix Pre recorders. They have some of those features we just talked about. They have analog limiters, very high quality. They have 32-bit float recording capability, and they have XLR inputs with very clean gain and the ability to amplify the signal without picking up a whole bunch of noise. So really good recorders. They also have some backup capabilities so you can record to an SD card plus to a thumb drive at the same time. So if one of them goes bad, you haven't lost everything. Now, if you do find yourself in a situation where you're working on a project where you do have a budget, maybe it's a commercial, maybe it's a corporate video, maybe it's a narrative film even, whatever it may be, if you do have the budget, I would highly recommend you hire a sound mixer. And the reason for that is it's going to make the filmmaking process a lot more enjoyable. And I think the results you'll get in the end will be much higher quality because you'll have a dedicated person focused on getting the highest quality sound and solving the problems on set as they occur. So you can actually redo that take once the problem is solved. So hope that was helpful. Get out there and make some great sound. It's always so cool to hear the perspective of industry professionals and just, just hearing their experience and what they've learned over the years on set. So thank you, Curtis, for, for gracing us with your presence on this video and collaborating with me on the series. If you haven't already done so, definitely head over to Curtis's channel and hit that subscribe button and, and let him know that I sent you, even though you're, you're probably already subscribed. To, to begin with. But if you enjoyed this video, if you're enjoying the series, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button down below and, and ring that bell next to it so you'll be notified when more videos like this come out in the future. Maybe smash that like button and uh, you can dislike it too if, you, if, if, you, if you're still here. You can do whatever you want. Leave a comment. If you haven't left a comment and, and don't have anything to comment, then, you know, tell me what your favorite microphone is and why you know, talking all about audio. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.